I'm frankly, thankfully joined by Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Titus Bayer, via Zoom for more on this. Doc, my sympathy for the loss of your colleagues, but I can also feel your frustration that at least 779 health workers have tested positive for the virus and nine have died. But I'm aware that your association is, and for instance, others, have been calling for some attention recently from government. Why are we here? Is it that government is not heeding to your demands? Um, thank you very much for having me. And I should say a very good evening to your viewers and uh, express my uh, sincere condolences to the families of our fallen colleagues. Indeed, it's a very sad state that we find ourselves in. The Medical Association has been making these calls for PPE since the very beginning of this battle. Government is making, like my president said in the interview, it is woefully inadequate. And that is why we are where we are. Now, I recall your constant reminders to government about shortage of drugs for the treatment of COVID-19 and also PPEs for health workers. How serious is the problem? Yes, in the area of drugs, Yes, we have different categories of patients. And so if you take the patient with mild to moderate symptoms, those who have been managed at home, they are on immune boosters, some antibiotics, and these are available. However, our concern is with the critical to severe cases who are in the treatment centers. Uh, some of the drugs used there, like the hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine in particular, now we are manufacturing locally, so that is helping. But a critical drug, which is very, very needed, is one we call anticoagulants, um, like clexane, like uh, fragment. These are low molecular weight heparins. And for most of the people who were dying, the earlier knowledge that we had about this virus, it showed that they had clotting of blood in their system, uncontrolled clotting that led to their death. So these drugs prevent clotting. And it is our information that they are in dire need at most of our treatment centers that are managing severe cases, and they are not in uh, adequate supplies. Again, there are some antivirals like the Redemsevir that are being used in other parts of the world. We don't have some here. If you remember when we lost our colleague, Professor Jacob Plangeru, it was the drug that we were told uh, a presidential jet had to go and bring it from a foreign country into, the, uh, into Ghana. As we speak today, if another doctor falls and needs that drug, we might not get it. Uh, if anybody else in this country needs that drug, it's a compassion drug that can be used in the final stages and may save a life, it may not be available. So we are asking that these things be improved. And in the case of the PPE, the regularity of the supply of the appropriate quality of PPE is a challenge. If you distribute a few masks and then also a few medical scraps and then make a statement that you have given out this number of masks, it doesn't help the situation. It must be a constant supply. So that when you get to work, your focus is work and not will I get a max, will I get this? That, that, that's not what we are looking for. Hmm. So, but government all this while says it is working around the clock to meet your demands. Why? You don't believe in government anymore? It's not an issue of belief. These assurances have been coming. But you see, um, the challenge is it is deliverables. And it's not an issue of assurance. Yes, when I report to duty tomorrow and I need to go to theater to operate on a patient that I suspect may have COVID, I need an N95. Will I get it to use? If I take that patient sample to send to the lab, for me to be sure, it's going to take three weeks. That means I cannot do that surgery until after three weeks that I know the status of the patient. And if I know the status of the patient and I need N95, will I get it? These are the issues. So we are just telling government that it is doing a lot but we are giving government feedback. And our press conference today should send a strong signal to government and to the Ghanaian in general, that this is all healthcare workers who have come together and we are telling you the major challenge we have. And we think government will take it more seriously this time, seeing that we are all together in this. 
Well, let me pick your thoughts on this one. Um, the Noguchi Memorial Institute says uh, they're getting in some 500,000 test kits, and that should help in testing um, the backlog of 7,000 cases that we have. This should be good news for you. It is good news, but we are not interested in the figures. At this moment, if you ask the doctor, if you ask the nurse, if you ask the orderly who works in the hospital, it is not the figures. We are tired of the figures. We will hear all these figures, but what matters to us is the key performance indicators. If I still, if I, my sample is taken and it will take 16 days for me to get the results, of what use is 500,000 test kits to me? We need to get results rapidly. So if they've gotten 500,000 test kits, they should distribute it efficiently, get to work, clear the backlog. And like we stated in our statement today, if we take a sample by Monday, we should be able to get that results by Tuesday. That is when we will have satisfaction and comfort, not figures anymore. We've had too many of the figures. I'm grateful for your time. Di Titus Bayo is Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. Now, for